out your eye. You said the first, these cuts are all plunge cuts, so they're extremely dangerous. Probably just about the most dangerous thing you can do with a saw, a chainsaw.
I didn't get a good straight cut down in there the first time. That's better. Okay, now that's full of shavings in there. This Excelsior type of stuff that comes out of making a rip cut with a <coughs> cross cut filed saw. And these make excellent fire starter. Um, they're wet, this log is pretty wet. So they're not going to be the best, and I have to try to find some. I can't let it get started with, some other wood to get started with. But that's the basics on how you make a uh, wooden rocket tool. Now let's see if you can't get it to fire up. starter. Uh, look at paper, it's not even a very good fire starter. And uh, put it in here. Leave room for air to get through there. Now air will go through, feed through these saw curves that are left. And I don't want to do this too tight. Now this, this wood this log cut up the firewood. But it's fairly really green. It's got a lot of water in it. <coughs> so we'll see what kind of candidate it is. I left a bunch of this uh, noodles down in here. And uh, but again, like I said, they're, they're pretty wet. So uh, we're not gonna not gonna start too good. Put a little bit of paper down in this. Uh, oh, it's starting to smoke out the chimney. I'm going to put a little bit of paper in there to start warming that up down in there so it draws the air, draws the air up. If you get warm air in there, then that'll create a draft coming up there. Pull, pull the air through there. So see uh, this is some yellow cedar slabs that have the filling been drying for a while, so they're pretty good. So we got flames coming up through there already. Okay, it's 3.35 p.m. Oh, we just got the fire going. Let's we'll see what happens here. Got smoke coming out of it anyway. I didn't get a very good junction in here between the fire air hole and the, uh, and the chimney. bit of a dog leg in there on that. Not the best, best one.
down here now. Get a little bit of better fuel in there. Starting to get a little bit of rocket action out of this in here now with this wind blowing in the front. And uh, a lot of smoke, probably will be a lot of smoke because that is green wood. But they've also got the plugged up with Excelsior and stuff in there. It's the green, which is burning out now. Do that with a metal rocket stove. Had, uh, trying to get some flames coming out of it now on the top and uh, see it charcoaling up a little bit oh yeah there we go we got flames now charcoaling up a little bit um, on the wood Let's see there's the fire um, you got uh, see that Excelsior there, how fast it catches and how quick it burns. It makes a good fire starter. But, uh, looking on up in there, you can actually see the sides of the chamber in there glowing. Coals starting to turn to coals there in the chamber. Oh, just a minute here. Oh, we got it upon a piece of wood. Okay. And we got. Uh, Kettle. I'll do a little different on that. Uh, a couple of purple slices of wood there. Um, still smoking. Still not burning quite as good as it will. But it's hot. So, what time is it? Four o'clock. Okay. It's not boiling. But it's starting to make noise in there. It was cold water when we put it on, went right out of the spigot, which is it's been below, below freezing the last few days, so it's plenty. Okay, that thing's boiling. It's uh, actually 13 after four. We just put it on at four o'clock exactly. That thing started whistling about uh, about seven or eight minutes after, but all the batteries on all my cameras were dead. I had to go find a wife's camera. So anyway, the water's boiling. It took about seven, seven minutes or so to bring it to a boil. A tea kettle, and it's full. And uh, so you can see the flame. That's a cooking flame now. Now we just used a couple of uh, of uh, pieces of wood on there to as a standoff for that uh, pot. Um, one of the things you could do is make notches in here with the chainsaw all the way around for the air to come out of there to set a pot on. 
or uh, find a cast iron um, top for a, a propane grill or something like that to use uh, a cook stove or something to put on there um, and uh, yeah, it'd be some way to figure out to uh, to harvest the heat off of that I don't know maybe put a drum over it or something or or some kind of reflector around the back of it you could stack rocks up on top of it I know people are gonna scream about not putting rocks on a fire because they'll pop and blow up but uh, um, it, they've been doing that for a thousand years or more and it works we used to put them rocks on the stove rocks on the fire warm them up a little bit and then wrap them up in towels and put them in our sleeping bag when we were out um, camping out when it was below zero or so and stay comfortable and uh, heat up a rock and drop it down in the toe of your shoe dry your shoes out at night you don't want to get them too hot because you don't want to burn your shoes but this thing is uh, definitely working um, that that's hot and the wood's starting to char in there again this is a was a green wet piece of hemlock when you drive that axe in there water just squishes out of it um, so it's it's definitely wet um, but it self-maintains once it gets going um, it'll dry itself out and uh, the, the, you can see the coals in there on the on the sides of the uh, hole there in the firebox uh, once it gets going uh, the heat reflects off of the sides onto each other and it'll actually burn uh, itself without any fuel without feeding it any more fuel once you get it going um, the uh, Got a nice bed of coals in there. Nice bed of coals in there right now. The uh, you can stuff it fairly full because the the curse from the saw. Once you get it started, is the curse from the saw uh, draw the air in. Um, that. Uh, it's actually pretty full in there so so this started at uh, 335 we got the fire going it took about half hour to get it did it burning good and then it took about uh, seven or eight minutes to boil a, a tea kettle on it and uh, you want to cook a steak or something like that on it it's plenty hot enough to do that now probably hot enough to melt aluminum but uh, there's a rocket stove. And you can actually, like the Excelsior, the shavings that come out of that, they're a good fire starter, even on a wet one like this. This block here that came out of it, it's pretty wet. We can put it in there and burn it. This is the heart wood. It'll burn. Um, another piece out of the heart, that'll burn. So it doesn't take a whole lot of, of uh, kindling and stuff to get it going you can use the the uh, shavings that come out of it when you uh, cut and uh, a few small pieces of kindling to get it going and then once you get it going you can use the chunks that come out of it to, to keep it going but then it's self-sustaining once you get it in there you can see it's it's charring and burning all the way up through that um, it's too hot to get any closer Okay, it's uh, five o'clock. This thing's been going for an hour and a half now. Um, you can look down in it and see how it's hollowed out. The it's still hot, hotter than hell. Uh, out the inside of that chimney. Um, still flames coming up out of the top of it. Not near as high as they were, but there's plenty of heat coming out of it. Um, hasn't been any fuel put in it for a while. That's inside. Oh. 
it's hollowing itself out. Um, outside of the log is cold. In fact, uh, there's still still ice on the bark right there. I could put a little bit of fuel in there. Maybe get the fire going a little bit more. But oh yeah, that got going right away. Got going right away, Taki. Yes, it did. Got going right away, Saki. Yes, it did. Oh, she's burning now. It's a burning now. Oh, yeah. Look at the flames come out of it now. Look at the flames come out of it now. Now, it might be a, a good idea to, when you bore that hole in there, to angle it um, down towards the bottom of what you're going to, so it slides, so it goes down, and that way any fuel you put in there would kind of sl slide down into the fire pit but that thing is that whole chamber in there is a fire pit right now um, you can see the flames that wood is already starting to to catch on fire there and even outside of it so there's a lot of heat being reflected now you can put your hand out in front of it here so there's a little bit of heat being reflected out but not not a whole lot escaping out this side um, definitely heat coming out the top so anyway that's an hour hour and a half after we started it um, been probably 45 minutes or 30 minutes 45 minutes since we put any fuel in it it's uh, self starting it was still going and glowing in there putting out heat and now it's uh, Put a little bit of fuel in it and she's back to snorting again. Okay, been about uh, five minutes or so since I stuck the fuel in there. See no smoke coming out of the thing now. A lot of heat waves, flames coming up about a foot and a half to two feet above the top of the stove. Fuel is some of it's already burned down. Let's slide it in. Oh, it's still in there. So you could use that as a uh, safety fire for the kids out camping where they wouldn't get burned on it. Um, it's big enough where it won't tip over. The wood all the way around is cold to the touch so they can't get burned on it on the hot metal or anything um, the only place that's hot you see there's uh, see on this bark here it still froze onto the log there's still ice right there on the on the bark um, and it was melting off prior to starting the fire in there anyway just from the warm day it's about 40 40 degrees today so uh, you got a little bit of heat here in the mouth in the firebox coming out in front of it but I can hold my hand right here comfortably that that's pretty close to the firebox so uh, it's a uh, and you roast marshmallows or wieners on that definitely cook on it like I said, just after we got it, half hour after we started it, we boiled it. Just a little tea kettle, but the water boiled in the tea kettle in about seven minutes. That's pretty darn good. Okay, there's the two plugs that came out of it. This one here is the one that came out of this uh, fuel air uh, box. This one came out of the chimney. Um, it's tapered pretty good. They just stuffed them both in there. And uh, so it's been two hours since we started the stove. It burned up a little bit with a 
it goes way down when the fuel burns up in it and then uh, well just a, a minute or so after you stick more fuel in there in that chamber it starts getting hot again right away so it stays going even you know just burning itself there's what she looks like down in the chamber in the chimney so okay so this is two hours into the burn um, burned up a few of those little chips and stuff uh, that I brought to Kinlan, the, the yellow cedar and odds and ends. I still have a pretty good pile of, uh, of uh, shavings. Well, I didn't burn all of it up because there's one piece right there. So I only burned up one piece of, uh, of uh, the, the uh, Kinlan that I brought down and split up. Um, burned about half of the shavings up that we used to, uh, that we got out of it for getting the fire started. And uh, so there's the two plugs that came out of it. He said it's two hours now into the operation since we started the fire. Okay, uh, just for curiosity's sake, um, this is the log that I used. It's uh, 18 inches diameter um, one way it's not perfectly round naturally and yeah, it's about 16 and a half 16 and a half inches the other way um, these look I didn't burn that all the way through so the initial hole was about four inches um, you can see the plug that come out of there is three and you got the width of the the saw curve, which is about three eighths of an inch on either side, which would make it, you know, six eighths, uh, three quarters. So we we'll say it's four inches square, both the chimney and the uh, hole, and then the chain also. Uh, the curve on the chain was a little bit wider. I tried to keep the holes uh, as small as I could, and then the curve here, where it cuts through farther than that, the bar width is actually wider than four inches. So where the bar uh, cuts through on both sides of where the opening of the hole was. That allows air to pass into the chamber. And uh, it really doesn't do anything for the chimney. It, uh, fire does go up through those uh, slots that are left and uh, it eventually uh, burns out. But uh, so uh, we had approximately 18 inches and we've got uh, 20 21 inches from the top of the top of the cut to the top of the log I figured you know, about 25 inches 26 inches from the bottom of the cut to the log that was a that was a 28 inch bar um, that has got uh, log dogs on it sticking out, uh, bucking uh, spikes on it sticking out about three inches, so 25 inches is about as depth of cut. I, mean, I plunged it in as far as it would go um, through the log or into the log, endways into the log, and then just run it in from the side till it intersected. And you'd do it with a smaller saw or a longer saw, doesn't make any difference. The longer one would give you a longer log, would give you a little taller. Um, chamber to go through. This size of log, this log is actually just accidental. This size of log is actually just accidental. The length of it, I was cutting the log up into firewood and this was what was left on it. And so it's 38 inches tall. So 30, depend on how tall you are for cooking, 38 gives you a nice working height to put your uh, pans on and stuff. Uh, if you're a little shorter, like a little lower one, you could you, you could go a little lower, make it a little smaller, a little shorter. Uh, I don't remember 
I think seems like 35 inches or 30 inches was the ideal height for kitchen cabinets or something. You could use that as a height. Maybe, I don't remember what the height is now, but um, anyhow, you could uh, make it lower if you wanted to for comfort. Um, you can plunge it deeper and have your firebox closer to the ground, or you don't have to go so deep and you could have your firebox up higher. Um, I mean, it's adaptable. It's a piece of wood. You can make it whatever you want, and if you don't like that one, then the next one you can make it different. So it's not like something you have to live with forever. So this one's been burning two hours now, and we'll see how long, see how long it burns. This is kind of interesting. I thought there was maybe smoke leaking out of that, but that's steam coming out of bug holes in the, uh, in the wood. You see the burn chamber in there is getting bigger. It's, uh, it's staying inside of the, the log. It's the hole has eroded out some from the fire, but it's uh, mostly inside. But uh, there's several places there where there are bug holes, bug penetrations in the wood that uh, the moisture inside the wood is starting to, to boil and steam and come out, uh, come out of the log on uh, both sides over here. I thought that was kind of interesting. Make it got a steam engine too. Yeah, I'm down here about uh, 50 feet from the uh, log there, and uh, you can see flame coming up above the top of it about oh six inches to a foot. But you can see there's no smoke, but there are a lot of uh, a lot of heat rising off of that. A lot of heat coming off of that. You can see the heat uh, mirage there, pretty good. Okay, it's been uh, three hours now since we started the fire in this log. And uh, all of the wood, um, we got one little piece yet left left here of the wood that we got dug out of it when we made the cut the stove. That's all that's left of the pieces that came out. I came up with uh, two slabs of yellow cedar uh, here to use as kindling. I used one of them. I still have that one left. Pretty good si size pile of of uh, shavings left from uh, the cut, but a little less than half, I guess, of what come out of there about that. Um, you can see all of the all of the wood has burned up, and inside the log, the fire chamber, it's hauled itself out pretty good, but it's glowing. It's heat coming out of there pretty good now. Um, a lot of ash in the bottom of it, glowing embers, coals. The top up here has burned out. So it looks like it's about six, about eight inches in diameter now. Um, and you see down in there, it gets bigger as it gets down in the hole. But the whole thing is is glowing, and it's still hot coming out of the top of it. It's still hot enough to burn rice um, coming out of the top of that. There's coals all the way up. They're darker as they get towards the top, but they're still um, still glowing. Uh, a little bit of sap uh, getting um, boiling out of it here on the top. Still ice on the bark still cold on the side of it. Um, the fire is not near as big inside now as it was and it's burned out a lot of the wood. You can still see water running down out of some of the... yeah there's still steam coming out of out of some of these little pinholes that the bugs made in the log. Um, both sides. So uh, 
a little bit of heat coming out of the front of it here now reflecting out of if you put wood in there that would stop that heat from coming out of there it wouldn't take anything to get that going again into a roaring fire all right it's uh 8 30 it's been five hours since uh we started the stove um, it's uh, still cooking you can hear the We've got steam boiling out of it all over the place now. The rim is only about two or three inches on the one side here. It's still about five or six inches on the other side, but the uh, hole's gotten to be about eight to ten inches in diameter here. Um, steam is just boiling out of this thing. Um, it's wet here on the top from the uh, from the condensate or from the water boiling out of the out of the wood. Um, said this log was was really wet when we started you can see um, water coming out of the bug holes steam coming out of the bug holes all over on the top part on this side of the log um, and it feels warm the water is hot where it's coming out but the log is warm there on that side and it's, the bark here is starting to dry out where it had ice on it before um, steam coming out of it several places where it's thick here it's still not coming out but where it thins up then you can see the water starting to boil out of it on the on the sides um, you look down inside and as you get to the top here the it's, it's glowing in there glowing embers um, it's uh, hotter down in inside than it is. It's still lots of heat. There's still enough heat coming out of this you could cook on. There's lots of heat coming out of this. Uh, one maybe turning it over might uh, on its back might uh, be a way to uh, get some heat out of it, usable heat. But it's still hot coming out of the top here. Full of ash down there on the bottom. Um, so where the air is coming in, but it's glowing all the way around it. I know that that's probably not going to show up, but uh, but as you get to the top rim up here, it's a little darker, but there's still coals. It's still hot there. Um, so here's the here's the mouth the, in the fire chamber. Um, still coals in there. It's self burning, and. Uh, See what happens here. Grab a little bit of this shavings and throw in there. See what happens. And uh, let's see what else we got over here. Couple little pieces of wood, maybe. Now it's too wet to do anything with. A little sawdust. I guess I can just drop it right down at the top here. There we go. That works. That works. And just, you know, we got some smoke coming out of it. Got some sawdust down in there. And uh, see how long that takes to, to light up. It's starting to smolder. Fire coming out of the top. So that's how much it took to to get it going. That's the last bit of the wood that come out of the uh, cut on this. What else we can get? Chunks of wood over here. Pieces, odds and ends. Oh yeah, look at her come. Look at her burn now. 
ready to burn now. Well, that took, what, less than a minute to get that fire going. Yeah, she's uh, steaming pretty good out of the side of this log now. It's starting to warm up. I can still hold my hand on the thick part of it there. I can feel heat. I can feel heat on it here where this bark was. There's steam coming out of it all over the place. That's kind of cool. Yeah, a few pieces of wood in there. Fire just takes right off. Oh, it didn't take a minute or two to get a, a roaring fire going back in that again by throwing some, some fuel into it. Well, it's uh, nine hours after we lit the, the stove, lit the wood stove, and it's pretty much gone out. Um, no more fuel to feed it that wasn't wet. Got uh, oh, four inches on this side left and five or six inches on this side down to an inch and a half or so on that side. Big cavity. Um, there's still heat, still heat in there. It still feels warm, a little bit of smoke coming out, but uh, it's pretty much dark now. Um, no more glowing coals, embers. Um, it's uh, warm to the touch. The outside of it is the shell is warm to the touch. Yeah, and there's there's heat in there, but pretty much dead now. Um, so that's nine hours with no, see the last time, it's been two hours since I put fuel in it and that was just a little bit then, just to, so, and anyway it's still whole, just a rim around it now.